Do you need a sump for your aquarium? No. However, you probably should have one, so stick around to see how I built and installed mine. When setting up a saltwater aquarium, in my opinion, there's really only one good option for filtration, a sump. Sumps are good for freshwater too, but it's really much simpler and they could definitely do with only a heater and maybe a canister filter. So then a sump really isn't necessary. Even a high-tech planted tank would usually have CO2 injected into the main display, not the sump anyway. So overall, freshwater tanks don't get too messy, usually. I'm dying, help me. With saltwater, however, your basic tank is gonna run some kind of mechanical filtration, filter sock, roller, a protein skimmer, a heater, auto top off, carbon, or other chemical media in a reactor or bag. And then there's UV sterilizers, nutrient export via macroalgae or algae scrubber, dosing for corals, an ugly thermometer, a cat. All this equipment has to go somewhere. And if you actually like looking at your aquarium, you'll probably want it out of your main display. This is where a sump comes in, your childhood closet. It gives you a place to hide all the equipment, serves as a place to dilute certain liquids being dosed into the aquarium if you're doing that, and increases the total water volume of the system. For the last almost two years, the only thing I've been running on this 120 is a refugium. And it's been fine. So then why do I need a sump? I thought it was fine. Well, sure, but it's also understocked and the lighting is pretty low, so there really isn't much algae. If I wanted to increase the lighting, we'd probably have some problems. I want to set up a protein skimmer as well as get the other stuff out of the main display. But after I moved a couple years ago, I just never set the sump back up. The previous version of this tank was a 56 gallon corner bow front with a 10 gallon sump that I made with glass and acrylic that I cut myself. A sump that small wouldn't have been a good choice for the 120, so I just didn't set it up and I avoided getting a new one. In case you're wondering why an undersized sump won't work, assume your power goes out. And even with check valves and other safety devices installed, there's still a good chance a large amount of water is going to back siphon into the sump, mainly from the return line. Having a hole somewhere on the pipe slightly under or at the water level line will allow air to enter the pipe and break the siphon should your return pump shut off. Still, whatever water siphons back into the sump is going to cause it to overflow if there's not enough room. So a 10 gallon sump gives very little room for extra water. To estimate how much water you'll need to account for, take the size of your tank divided by the number of inches or centimeters your tank is tall. In my case, this 120 is about 20 inches tall. So for every one inch of water drained out of the tank, that equals six gallons. So after searching for the best option, besides a new sump, I found prefabricated kits to convert aquariums into sumps. So I got the 20 gallon long sump baffle kit from Fiji Cube. After unboxing everything, the quality actually seems pretty good for the price. If you've bought plexiglass before, you'll know it's not cheap. And with all the extra machining and cutouts, it's definitely worth the value of not having to make it yourself. The only things you'll need that aren't included in the kit are some cyanoacrylate superglue for bonding the acrylic supports to each other and some aquarium safe silicone and a roll of paper towels because this shit's gonna get messy. You'll probably need around five to six ounces of silicone. So that's two of these small tubes. The problem with the large tubes, which is probably a better value, is you really can't get the gun in the tank enough to reach the seams. I really wish these panels were made of glass because silicone sticks much better to glass than it does to acrylic. So you'll definitely need to use more silicone than you would normally use for bonding a glass seam. It's more like creating a channel for the acrylic to sit between with the silicone holding it in on both sides like bookends. But for the size of this sump and the amount of pressure that's gonna be on the acrylic, I really don't think there's gonna be any problem with the silicone holding. So after the three hours I spent peeling the paper off the acrylic, I'm gonna start setting things up.
After letting it cure for 48 hours, as well as the plumbing I glued, I installed the sump. And I don't have footage of that because it took me forever. And after removing the trim on the tank, the cabinet doors, and a few cuts from the glass later, Tis but a scratch. I got the sump to fit. I would definitely recommend test fitting the tank you're going to use before you put the thing together. So after everything was installed, I could start up the sump. Everything took some fine tuning to get right, mostly the downpipe. I tried like a hundred variations with the angle, adding elbows, bends, vent holes, standpipes. I couldn't get the micro bubbles to calm down. I thought the main problem was probably the fact that I used an inch and a quarter pipe and I thought that might be too big for the flow rate, which is not very high coming from the hang on the back overflow box that I have. But I also figured having a large pipe would mean there'd be less clogs over time and I wouldn't have to clean it as often. And it's actually not that loud. It was just the issue of the micro bubbles and getting salt creep from the bubbles splashing water. So in the end, I created this weird chamber where the water can enter, the micro bubbles can calm down and then water can flow out of the side at a more steady rate where then it enters into a media bag, a small media bag with somewhat large holes. And that pretty much stopped the rest of the micro bubbles. I think overall the chambers are big enough for what most people would put in them for the size of tank you're gonna use this with. I left room for the skimmer I'm gonna eventually upgrade to later, and there was still enough room on the other side for a decent sized refugium with some Kato. Although in my case, there's not enough flow going through the sump to spin the Kato like it should be, or the holes in the baffle aren't in the right position to get the Kato to spin. So for now, I've got this tube and a pump from my crappy protein skimmer that I'm using just to get the Kato to spin until I can buy something or make something that will actually do a better job. The water level adjustment's actually pretty nice to be able to fine tune the water level in the different chambers. So all you have to do is turn these nylon screws and you can slide the baffle up and down to increase or decrease the water level in the middle section of the sump. So that was my experience with a DIY sump kit. I would probably buy another one. Although if I set up a different sump for this 120, I would probably get something a little larger and something that's capable of handling a little more flow. But I definitely save some money and I can always upgrade later. If I did upgrade anything right now, it would probably be adding a second or a larger overflow box to the back since this tank's not drilled. I think now the limiting factor is I get bubbles sucked into the overflow if the flow from the tank to the sump is too high. So that would mean either adding a second overflow box or just replacing the one I have now with a bigger one. That's pretty much it for this video. Subscribe to see an update on the sump in a few weeks, as well as some more awesome content. So thanks for watching.